son. My husband has been missing since 3 o'clock in the afternoon was the last time I spoke with him. And um, his phone is pinging behind your fire station. I said, can you please tell me what's behind the fire station? And um, the fireman told me that it was a holding lot. And we've never had any contact at all with the police at all. So I had no, I said to him, what is a holding lot? I had no idea. How long had he been missing at this point? Um, this was about one o'clock in the morning that we finally um, pinged his phone. Okay. And, and um, Dom, are you conscious at all at this time? Completely out. I don't remember any of that. They had me on morphine drip. Yeah. Um, the fireman actually put me on hold and um, got me the number of the police department, and um, then I called the police department. And I never called the police department before this because Don's never been in any type of trouble, so I knew he wasn't going to be at a police department, you know. Whoop. It's just totally out of line. My thing was with the weather situation that, um, you know, something might have happened. What police um, department did you contact? It was uh, the Monroe County Sheriff's Department. Okay. And um, so I called there and actually spoke to a um, corporal citizen. Um, and my son, of course, was with me this whole time. We had this guy on speakerphone. And, um, yeah, um, Corporal and told me that they had my husband and um, they were processing him, but he was injured, but they're processing him. And so me never dealing with, like I said, the police before, I assumed Don was at the police department and, I mean, he had a cut on his hand or something. I mean, I had no clue. And um, I said, is there a reason that he hasn't been able to, is there a reason he hasn't called me yet? They mean processing um, as in processing, like you're going to jail? Exactly. Exactly. And you don't know he's been shot in the head at this point? Oh, no. Oh, okay. no, I have no idea. I'm literally thinking that he's at the jail and he's, I'm assuming he's got a cut on his hand or something, you know? I, and I have no clue. And um, anyways, I had asked, you know, is there a reason he hasn't been able to call me yet? Because here I am, scared to death of what, what's happening. And um, he said, oh, man, these, sometimes this takes some time. So I was like, okay. And I hung up the phone with this guy, not knowing what else to ask or, you know. Anyways, I called back about 10 minutes later and said, hey, when is visitation hours tomorrow? Because I'm thinking I will be at the police department 10 minutes before I can go see him and find out what in the hell is going on. And um, then I'm informed by this corporal that Don is not there and I cannot go see him. And I'm like, sir, I just hung up the phone with you. You know, you told me you're processing my husband and he's injured. And he said, yes, ma'am, but um, he's not here. He's at the hospital. And I screamed, he's at the hospital? He said, yes, ma'am, he's been shot in the head. Holy shit. And um, I literally hit the floor. Um, started screaming, is he alive? And I don't know why I said this, but I said, can he talk? I, it, it, weird things go through your mind in these situations. And anyways, um, and put me on hold for about, it seemed like five minutes or so. And he came back and he said, your husband is alive. And I said, well, I'm going to, I said to my son, and he could hear, I'm going to put jeans on. And Corporal said, you need to stop. You'll be arrested if you go anywhere near the hospital. They were going to arrest you. Arrest me. To go. my son if we went anywhere near the hospital. To visit your husband who was just shot in the head. Yes. So what did they tell you to do? Anything? Um, he told me that I had to wait until 8 o'clock the next morning. When investigator or 
lieutenant would be able to answer some questions for us. Um, I asked if there was a reason why uh, investigator and her lieutenant hadn't called me at that point, you know, before this time. And um, I was told that, well, ma'am, it was shift change. Oh, shit. And I was just floored. Um, needless to say, I was up all night worried to death about my husband who had just been told he was shot in the head. Wow. At 8 o'clock the next morning, I was on the phone with investigator and he told me he won't believe that. He said, um, your husband's a career criminal with a rap sheet as long as your arm. He said um, he has several felony charges, including drug convictions, so he's not even legally allowed to possess a gun. Holy shit. And the whole time he's telling me this, I'm crying, of course. And um, Anderson then proceeds to tell me um, what he thought happened to Don, which turned out to be his inaccurate is the background check that they pulled on my husband so they pulled the wrong rap sheet on your husband and told you that he was a career criminal after he'd been shot in the head and nobody's seen him yet other than the doctor and the officer who's guarding his hospital room that you're not allowed to go see So what? I literally, I literally stood up and hit the floor. When I could finally talk, I was literally screaming. Sorry. That's um, okay. They're yeah. going to put a plate in his head. They're going to put a plate in his head. And I stood up again and hit the floor again. Um, by the way, he does not have a plate in his head at 10 a.m., approximately 10 a.m. the next morning. So this is now about 18 hours after my husband had been shot. I was told, got a phone call from him that said something that came to light and I could go to ICU and see my husband. So what was it like when you got to the hospital and you saw your husband oh for the God, first John. time. My son literally had to help me to the car and um, put me in the car and put a bucket in my lap and drove me to the hospital. Um, we walked into the ICU, ICU approximately 20 hours after my husband had been shot in the head. Wow. In that time, of course, he could have died. Yeah, very um, easily. This person, you know, he changed our lives forever. He yeah. reached in and literally ripped out part of my heart. Um, I thought 
I used to be a strong person. And uh, now, of course, I've been diagnosed with severe panic attacks and PTSD from the way we were treated. Wow. So... Um, Walking in, no, I apologize. Walking in to see Don, um, once I got there, um, the total shock of seeing it all was just overwhelming. Um, I stayed extremely calm once I was with him, which was really surprising. Um, but I ran right to him and grabbed his hand and said, baby, I'm here. Was Don responsive? Do you remember this, Don? Kinda. So you were like in and out. Oh yeah, I at was this point. fucked up, bro. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why. Sure. <laughs> You've been blown up. Yeah. But uh, I'm just kidding. But did the relationship with Monroe County Sheriff's Department improve after they had realized that they had given you the wrong fucking rap sheet and allowed oh, no. you to go to the hospital and and see? Your husband? Did they did they get any better? Did they improve? Did oh my they god. apologize? I was I was at, oh god no. I was actually told by a and I told him on the phone at one point that um I had to have Don's cell phone. Um I said, you know, I've gotta get in touch with his shop. I've gotta let somebody know what's going on. Um and and told me that he would be he would bring the cell phone to Don's hospital. Well, needless to say, um, he did not do that. Um, and I did not speak with him again at that point. Um, it got to a point where I couldn't even communicate with people. Um, I had the words, but I couldn't get the words out. Um, and the only time I was calmed down a little bit was when I was actually with Don. Um, it was just crazy. Um, and a lot of things happened during this process, too. The way they treated my son, myself, and my husband uh, is just totally unacceptable. Yeah, I remember... I showed up, me and Katie showed up shortly after this part, and um, I don't want to make you go into it any farther, but I just want to say thank you for reliving that with us, and um, I, I appreciate you taking our call. And um, Don, you have anything? Love you, baby. I love you, too. All right, Pam. I say one quick thing, Sean? Of course. Um, I don't care if you're purple or green or red or blue. Nobody should be treated the way Monroe County Sheriff's Department treated my family. Nobody. Yeah, that's for damn sure. And I still struggle with, I have no idea how to thank the people that helped us. I thank God for not taking Don from me that night. I thank the nurses and the doctors for keeping my husband alive. I thank, you know, my son who, wow, we raised such a strong young man who helped me so much through all of this. My boss, my coworkers, my mother, who financially stepped up and helped us, Clock Tower and Ninja and Keith and you and Katie, Kurt and Kirk and James Meehan, and all the people that were in route to my house that I stopped. Um, I, I just, how do you thank these people? Well, you just did, and it just shows you guys got a lot of love coming towards you now. You know, we're all praying for you. 